And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a returning good brother to the temple. The madman behind Black Oath Games, responsible for many games that have shown up here in the temple in the last year or so. Um, between between the subject matter today, Rift Breakers, or Across a Thousand Dead Stars, or, or all, ma all manner of things. The one and only Alex T. How are you doing today, man? Hey, Mildred. Thanks for having me again. Thanks, How are you doing? Thanks for, com thanks for coming on, and th thank you for... Being being willing to talk to me regarding Rift Breakers, since that's with some of the stuff that we've talked about, it's already out or in the process of being out. But with Rift Breakers, that was one that, for a good amount of time, was was under my radar until I finally um, covered it. And yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting talk. I think yeah. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting talk, and it's going to be a good a good a good chunk of of us burying the um the ivory the ivory tower mentality uh as if i don't do that enough and the answer is no i do not do that enough i will never i will never bury that mindset enough <laughs> uh <laughs> it's now is i will admit part of the reason that i covered rift breakers a while back was i looked at rift breakers is a is a game that is heavily drawing upon MMOs, and yep. a lot of the people who I saw were reviewing it were playing things a little bit straight, or it's very clear they had no knowledge about MMO design and weren't and were addressing okay how MMO is this MMO inspired game and. That was the angle that I want. That I wanted to cover it from. It's like when I covered Fabula Ultima from the perspective of someone for whom the idea of a JRPG in tabletop form wasn't new. wasn't a, mm -hmm. wasn't a novel concept. Not I'm not slagging anybody with with that kind of thing. It was just a pattern that I note that I noticed. So. I suppose I'll start with what was your first introduction to MMOs and and MMO design? Yeah, so I've been playing video games since the since the early eighties. So <laughs> video games in general, of course, like I guess everybody who who's into tabletop role playing games, it's it's uh, something that like we were talking before, they are intrinsically linked. So whoever loves tabletop role playing games, it's probably going to love video games. So, well, uh, <laughs> I, before long before I was, I discovered role playing games, tabletop role playing games, I was playing video games, and uh, but of course with the rise of computer role playing games, it was absolutely ab amazing uh, for me to discover I could play role playing games on in a computer, and then. The advent of online gaming and all that it was just uh, uh, perfect. So my first foray with with uh, online MMOs, I guess, would have been. I'm trying to remember if it was first Ultima, mm -hmm. or or well, it's not exactly an MMO. But the way we used to run it, um, Neverwinter Nights, the the first one, mm -hmm. which we we used to run big server and we ran it like a like a mmo mmo because uh, we had a gm setting up big events and i don't know it was a it was a pretty cool online community we we created there actually i was running the game for a while as a gm and and planning events for players and yeah it's a quite cool experience but definitely the one i i play the most uh, it's uh, of course world of warcraft which I still play to this day, and not as much as I as I did the originally. But yeah, it's it's been on and off since since it first appeared in two thousand four, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
and since then I, I played a lot of different MMOs. But but yeah, the 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 one I played the most is definitely World of Warcraft. Yeah. And given that given that, I'd like to I'd like to do a bit of word association with some or with some early MMOs and if you had if you had played them, if you had dipped into them, if if you hadn't, uh, just to get just to get a vibe for things. Sure. Let's see. So you already mentioned Ultima, so Dark Age of Camelot. And well I if it has to be one word um mass battles. To, it, <laughs> it doesn't have to be one word. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Well, that one I, I didn't play it myself, but I did have a friend who who played it, and I remember just watching him play. And yeah, I remember just big battles between players and a lot of PvP stuff. So I was never that much into PvP. So more of a PvP or even more to gearing towards sandbox style of of play. Even though I I love World of Warcraft, and it's like the antithesis to sandbox. Play, I, I really enjoy sandbox playing, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would say big, big uh, PvP battles is the first thing that comes to to mind when you mention yeah. Archage of Camelot. Um, lineage. Um, that one I I really never played. I I don't I don't know much about it. I'm afraid. Uh -huh. I I heard of it, but no, I was never really interested in in it so uh, sorry right. um i'd be remiss if i didn't bring up that request yeah another one that which i don't know um i i, I it never really called to me i'm not sure why I, it's just i don't i i never played it i mean i it was one of those games that everybody said i should check out and i never actually did <laughs> If I'm being honest, I had more. I spent more hours on the Champions of Norath games, which were basically Baldur's the um, Dark Alliance games with <laughs> without the yeah. Baldur's Gate in it. Um, yeah. Star Wars Galaxies. Oh, sandbox, definitely sandbox. The sandbox game, <laughs> mm -hmm. absolute freedom and very very cool game. Amazing crafting system, just very fun game. <laughs> yeah, I I do I do I do recall I do recall with that one how um Ralph Coster did not want to put Jedi in the game but he was forced to by the high yeah. ups. <laughs> yeah. And the reason he didn't want Jedi in the game is in his words Jedi would be an alpha class. And yeah. Because and he, because of that, people would end up going straight for that. Yeah. But the last, the last one that I'll br that I'll bring up for this kind of thing is Ragnarok Online. Yeah, I did play it, uh, but not so much. Uh, that one, the first thing that I associate with is definitely grinding. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> it, like any any Asian. MMO, it's a lot of grinding, yeah. but yeah, it was had a very cool class system and a lot, a lot of very interesting design ideas, mm -hmm. which I think will make a very decent uh, tabletop role playing game. So yeah, I'm cool tooling game. around with trying with trying to do that. Well, I it's something I would really love to play. So continue, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now with Rip now. I mentioned this before we went live, but when it comes to MMO design, you can put it into one of two camps, um, sandbox style and theme park style. For yeah. those uninitiated, a sandbox style, is that's going to be the more free form. You're put, you're put into a spot and can just do whatever you want. This is where you get your runescapes, your EVE Online's, your, your um, Star Wars Galaxies, uh, your EverQuests, that kind of thing. A theme park one is one where you have, um, in build quests, you have um, specified activities in certain areas, you have specified levels in certain areas, and you're usually following some kind of attempt at a story. Uh, 
World of Warcraft is the big is the biggest example of theme park, but I'll, I'd say the majority of MMOs that are active now are theme park style. There's some that are sandbox style, but they're not as prevalent as they were in the 2000s. Yeah. Where would you say Rift Breakers falls into? Would you say it falls into the sandbox style or the theme park style? Yeah, well, um, the nature of tabletop roleplay games, it really tends towards sandbox. You're always going to have much more freedom and and it's more difficult to make a whole game an adventure of course you can make an adventure to be really extremely on rails but like the whole setting and the whole game it's always going to tend more towards sandbox style of of, of play i i think in my opinion but uh, even so i i think uh Rift breakers uh, even though it has the, the a little bit of open world and sandbox elements uh it's it's more geared towards attempting to be a theme park because i what i had in my mind was simulating the yeah clearly world of warcraft or Elder scrolls online or something like that final fantasy 14 so yeah that kind of uh, more theme park uh, mmo so you you do have like you mentioned specific uh, activities and in concrete uh, things that you you have to do in the game in order to progress and advance your your character and your own story. But like I said, it's still a tabletop game, so you always have the the freedom to just do whatever you want. Uh, something something I've always found amu- amusing is when I sit with, with some of the stuff we've covered is that you're using like the basic six ability scores, but the but um, in this case, it's instead of using d20s this is going to be more percentile based um yeah the when it came to doing percentile based was that to carry on the fact that pers- that there's a lot of percentile based um setups in mmos no not really it's just personally for me the percentile systems are clearly superior <laughs> This is my my personal opinion, of course, but I think they are much more intuitive for new players because everybody understands at D one hundred how to use it. It's just you know that if you have fifty percent chance of accomplishing something, I mean that's basic. Uh, I don't think there's a single person on the planet who wouldn't understand uh, percentages. So it's a very easy to uh, set up and easy to to work with. So and also I was using the the rule set or derivation of the rule set that I first wrote for the previous game I the one I released before Rift Breakers which was uh, Broken Shores. Mm-hmm. So um, it was just uh, like the natural path I was taking and then developing that my own D100 system, which is. I just keep I I uh, different I keep iterating on it and it and refining it and and yeah I'm I'm in a position right now with where I'm very happy with it and and all the le- lessons that I learned with developing in Rift Breakers I applied into the following games and I'm going to retroactively apply them back to the Rift Breakers uh, well we'll talk about that later but yeah I'm, I'm planning some big updates for the game yeah um what's what's kind of amusing is you mentioned one you mentioned wanting to go in the theme park style a la wow with with a lot of it but in in a lot of those games a lot of theme park style games they operate on some sort of class career archetype system whichever you want to call it Whereas yeah. you are going semi-classless. The closest thing to the class is the hearts. And yeah. that and that's more of a that's more of a ability tree than what would be con- than what would be considered a typical class that you pick at soon as soon as you start creating. So I'm cur- I'm curious if uh, I'm curious how the heart system came to be. Was it a way to do the class trees without um beat without using classes yeah so i'm not a big fan of classes and they're by their nature generally speaking 
um, limiting. And for me, one of the core things that attract me to uh, um, tabletop roleplay games is the freedom of creating the character you want. So any game that is going to put limits to that kind of freedom is not something I'm going to enjoy. So I think the only game where I actually have classes is in Ruthless Heaven's Boundless Fate, which we discussed a few months ago. Um, and and even though even there the the classes are just like a starting point. So with hearts, yeah, I wanted a little bit of a structure. So not to just give you here, you have all this 100 abilities, uh, pick whichever you want. It's, uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming for new players. So I think the the guidance that uh, Heart provides is it's great. You get the general idea of what kind of powers you're going to get with a Heart. Because well, for those who who haven't watched your review, a Heart is is uh, like like you said, it's a kind of a class. So you have the Bastion Heart, which is more protective or the defensive abilities and um, using a lot of shield, arm, heavy armor, all that kind of stuff. Or you have the Arcanist, which is with magic, ele Elementalist, which is with more uh, elemental-based spells, uh, Shadow, which is more roguish kind of heart. Mm -hmm. So like that, you have, uh, you have a lot of them, um, 10 different hearts. And the things that you can uh, create your character by combining four of them. So with those basic building blocks of each class, you can customize your your character quite quite nicely. And mm -hmm. and like I said, it provides a little bit of guidance for new players, and and you're not immediately overwhelmed by a lot of options. Yeah. The uh, the other thing is in do in doing so. Multiclassing is not as arduous as it can be in some class based games. No, it's definitely, it's actually a requirement. <laughs> you cannot really focus just on one heart because you will, there's a limit. You can only have five uh, abilities. Each heart has 20 abilities, but you can only pick five from each heart. So you will end up with. Uh, toolbox of, of, of 20 also so yes you cannot just focus on on one because your character will not be viable mm -hmm. although when it comes to the abilities it didn't escape my notice that it is channeling the aedu model mm. oh that that's I'm, the, not sure, I'm not sure what you mean aedu is the acronym for the power system in D D fourth edition at will oh, okay encounter, I, I... daily utility uh... <laughs> Yeah, well, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, I think it's an absolute, absolutely brilliant piece of design, game design, and I don't understand why it's not copied more because it's just, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a, it strikes. It's a perfect balance between um, simplicity and versatility. Versatility. So it's you don't need powerpoints or uh, spell slots. It's it's just perfect. <laughs> it's very very clever design so yes i i definitely took it from Fori. yep and that was as far as far as why it's not used more often um i've n i've never been able to figure that out aside aside from um people aside from people overcompensating since with that kind of setup you have a, a you have a set of abilities where that where um it's good where it's good where how do I want to phrase this? You don't have to concern yourself too much with having abilities that are too good to use, to quote H.C. Bailey, or the Rainy Day Paradox, as I've referenced before. Oh. Yeah. Now, gr granted, I've seen some people argue that the world's most litigious role-playing game's 5th edition carries that concept with the whole short and long rest thing, but in reality, it doesn't. It only does so on a surface level. Because with a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff that mm -hmm. has a limitation of short rest or long rest, it that limitation doesn't justify isn't justified with the benefit. 
Like, oh, you can add, you can add your wisdom modifier, but you can only do that once per short rest. Whoopee. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. As opposed to get, as opposed to say encounter powers, where you have this slightly beefier version of your normal offensive options or no, or normal utility options, but it's but it's limited to once per encounter or once per scene. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I think I I do remember some people getting hung up on the whole encounter part of that word, and I think that's where the MMO accusation came from. But I'd said look at it less of an encounter as more of a um, scene, like a scene change in World of Darkness. Yeah, that's definitely how we play it. When, like I mentioned you before, we we've, this year I've been running a for a game uh, like a campaign mm -hmm. and that's that's how we do it uh, the encounter powers are scene powers it's uh, they're not limited to a fight that's a very narrow and limited way of understanding it mm -hmm. and within the heart system you have each as i as i understand it each heart has um has a list of talents and a list of powers and as yeah. well as as well as well, the list of primes, yeah. And Which is just the uh, my own terminology for at will encounter and and daily uh, mm -hmm. powers. Yeah. Now, given given that, I'd like to play this. These might be a little bit obvious, but I'd like to play a little bit of word asso of word association. So, I'm going to go through the um, hearts, and you can tell me which. Traditional class would be would be the best equivalent. Oh man, let's see if I remember. <laughs> All right, so I'll start sure, with sure. Our, I'll start with the arcane heart. Yeah. Like what 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 would the arcane heart be akin to as far as like standard D and D classes? I guess it'll be the the wizard. Mm -hmm. It's it's that kind, of, even though. Um, well, half, half. I mean, the wizard. I guess I, I kind of split it into the arc, arcanist and the ritualist. Mm -hmm. So, but but yeah, the closest in D and D terms will be the the wizard. Yeah. Um, I'd say also the. Let's make this a little bit easier. Instead of using D and D classes, we'll use WoW classes because I think that might be closer to the mark. <laughs> um. um... Yeah, then the the mage, clearly the mage. Yeah. Uh the arrow heart. Yeah, that, that will be like a marksman hunter, I guess. Yep. Um Bastion Heart. Bastion clearly some sort of um action warrior. Uh Blade Heart. Blade will be more, yeah, I guess like an arms warrior or even the outlaw, a rogue. And anyone who's not into WoW listening to us right now must be having a, a great time. <laughs> uh, well, given how long the game's been around, some of that's some of that's going to trickle <laughs> down. So get good, scrub. <laughs> oh. Elemental heart. And that will be. Kind of a shaman, I suppose. The the oh, I haven't played shaman that much, so I can't remember the specs. But yeah, uh, yeah, kind of a shaman um, with a little bit of mage thrown in, mm -hmm. I suppose. Might might will be you. I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe also the arms warrior. Actually, because it's really based on on one uh, uh, one handed combat, and I don't know, just with your one sword and or whatever or axe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say it's a it's a arms warrior. Right. Uh, restoration. Restoration, uh, clearly holy, holy cleric. Mm -hmm. uh, cleric, what's it called in Warcraft? Well, priest. Priest, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, ritual. Ritual, like I said, uh, that's that's a kind of a wizard, more more than anything else. Yeah. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're 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 talking about Warcraft now. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> my mind went back to to D and D. So I don't know actually. Um, Warlock, because um, not not really, but because it's not. It's more like a utility kind of mage. It doesn't really have a equivalent in in World of Warcraft. Uh, that one is more. That one is probably the most stable top class of of the game. Yeah, it's it's see. a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, shadow. Shadow, yeah, definitely. Um, um, the rogue, the uh, assassination rogue, yeah. Yep. Um, and the last one is time. That's another one that doesn't really match. I mean, I guess the mage in Warcraft has a couple of time-related spells, but but yeah, not, not much, not much, not much else because it also has a little bit of healing and support. So it's also a little bit uh, weird to you can't find a a one-one match with with WoW with WoW classes. And within within all within all of all of these, I think one of the other, one of the other things I find interesting is the is the fact that you have it on a kind you have in, instead of just levels, you have a kind of tier system with the with the four ranks. Um, yeah, and it's not all. A lot of times, people will go with either a tier system, or they'll go, with, or they'll go with le they'll go with levels. And in your case, you focus more on this on this rank system and spending XP rather than a standard level system. Yeah, I thought it uh, it will be a uh, a little bit more interesting to something different, and I don't know. It just uh, that, that's how the <laughs> while I was writing the game. That's how it. It made me. It made sense for me to, to in order to balance both uh, your your own power and and to scale the enemies and and to do it in a relatively simple way. So because I always write games with the with uh, keeping in mind that um, it, it's going to be played by a, a one person, even though a lot of my games are played in by a group or co-op, whatever. I, my, the first thing in my mind is always the solo player, and I try to make it as easy as for them as possible because I'm, I'm a solo player, and, and I think I understand what solo players need. So since you do not have a GM adjusting the encounters and, and the general difficulty for you, I, that has to be supported by the game and has to be relatively simplistic and out, out, automatic so you don't have to spend a lot of time and and brain power on it. So the rank system simplifies that you only have four ranks instead of having to scale twenty levels or whatever. So it was like it was the simplest way to do it, I think. Mm -hmm. And with that in, with that in mind. I do recall the, reading the comment that you left on the initial re review that I when I covered the game, and you had mentioned that you were working on some, some sort of improvement or some sort of second edition or, or the like on rip on Rift Breakers. So I'd like to address that for a little bit. Is yeah. is um, are you doing a full on second edition or is it or is it a revised edition of Rift Breakers? Yeah, it's a it's a revised edition because um, I think it's too early to to do a second edition. I mean, the game it's it was released barely uh, yeah, like thirteen months ago, something like that. I mean, so just like a little bit over games. over a year ago. Yeah, uh, no, it's mostly less the director's cut and more community cut, I would say, because it's based on a, a lot of the feedback that I've been for the game and a lot of uh, constructive criticism and valid uh, points that people have been making and things I can streamline and 
And also, like I said, I've been using and refining that tool set with the, the with the follow up games. Uh, for example, the latest Kernel Thalas uses uses basically the same rule set, but it's a much more refined version of it. And I realized it streams li- it streamlines a lot of things that I can apply back to to riff break it. So, for example, I'm I'm getting rid of the attribute scores. It's all going to be purely skill based. So all the derived um, skills or whatever you want to call them from the attributes, mm-hmm. um, which allow you to to make attribute checks, all those are being rolled into the skill system. It's a very minimal change, very natural, but but it it just eliminates one one thing from from your mind. I mean, you don't have to think, okay, is this an attribute? Is a skill? It's just skills. So I think it's a I think it's a good decision. It worked well for for Karen Thalas and 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 I I prefer it. So that's like the most drastic change I'm making to the game. And then it's a lot of refinement. I, I'm going to simplify a couple of things, a couple of the way the loot works, um, making the rifts a little bit more interesting with uh, making the the rift lords stand out a little bit more giving them uh because right now when you encounter a, a the rift lord mm-hmm. it's just one of the one of the creatures from the rift just empowered so what i'm going to do is yes it's still a creature from the rift empowered but uh, they also get their own set of of rift lore abilities to make a little bit more interesting and um I don't know. It's well, completely new design. Also, I'm making the book a little bit larger, so the page count will go down a little bit. And new layout, but uh, it's going to be a free update for everybody who already owns the the book. I'm going to give out the PDF for free. I'll send uh, at cost code for everybody. So yeah, it's a free update for for everyone. Yeah, and, is, but I think the game is there is, is going to be thing. really greatly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Improved. Yeah. Yes, tell me, tell me, please. Yeah, sorry. There is one thing I do. Re- I do remember. Uh, co- I do remember covering in the in that that I wanted to ask if this was something that you plan on addressing for that revised edition, and that's proficiencies. Because I rem- I remember at the time feeling like individual weapon proficiencies didn't match what the game was trying to do. Oh. Uh, is that something that it, that's been brought up? Um, not really. No, uh, I have a big list of things that people <laughs> complain about, and and a lot of them, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm 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 implementing into the revised guild edition as as I'm calling it. But I don't remember people having problems with the proficiencies. But but yeah, that's I'm looking over every single aspect of the game and. And refining it, so in, in an attempt to streamline it. So yes, what your point was definitely valid, and I think that's something I can streamline and and simplify a, a little bit further to to make it less confusing. The same with uh, armor proficiency, all that kind of stuff. I think yeah, all that can be streamlined a, a little bit. And oh yeah, and another thing I wanted to to, to add before I forget, yeah, aside from all this. Refinements. I'm I'm adding a couple of new things to the game, which is the the uh, guild rules. Because what's an MMO without guild? So now you'll be able to set up your guild, even if you're playing alone. Which will have your guild uh, house and and crafting stations there for you to use and all that kind of stuff. And they are not very expensive. It's just the, the starting point for them. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a system I wanted to to implement. And I'm also adding a deeper follower rules because right now they are a little bit they're a little bit too simplistic. So, of course, as an optional rule, this is nothing mandatory. But uh, I'm adding the option to to level them up, uh, gear them up, and well, have a little bit more fun and personalizing the your your followers. Mm-hmm. So th- those those two pieces are actually already written. They've been available on my Patreon for, for quite a while now. So those are going into this new enhanced guild edition of the game. Yeah. And since you since guilds are brought up, 
that would naturally lead me to ask whether or not you plan on doing doing uh, rules for like guild housing. Yeah, the 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 basis of that is already going into this uh, guild rules mm -hmm. because, like I said, you get crafting stations, and and your followers can be there and small details like that. But it's I'm not doing it like I'm not going heavy into that because I think that deserves its own. I don't know if whole expansion, but definitely more than five, six pages. I think it, it deserves exploring a little bit further. So that will be more like a expansion material. Mm -hmm. And and that could be easily tied into raids and this sort of thing, which which of course has to has to come up at some point in the future. Yeah, just don't. I'm pretty sure you won't make the same mistake that Blizzard has been making with raids over the last few years. <laughs> it would that would be physically impossible for you to do. Because... Yeah, well, I haven't I haven't really started working on that, but yeah, it's something I I want to implement sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And given that, given that, uh, we I we had hinted at the whole mass combat thing when I talked about Dark Age of Camelot, but are guild versus guild um, concepts something that you've kicked around? Not, not really, no. But that's definitely something that will be very, very fun to play with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's. I have a big list of things I want to implement, and well, I have my priorities. But yeah, that if the if the in keeps being popular and people ask for stuff, I, eventually I will get to that sort of thing for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And I do recall, since you're, since you're bringing in uh, the attribute roles into, into a new form of skill, are the six attributes still going to be present during character creation? Uh, no, they're, they're gone. All, it's only, only skill, purely skill-based. So is it a case where you're, because the, because the reason I ask that is the way skills work, it is the attribute does provide a bit of a umbrella of sorts. So yeah. I'm, cur I'm curious if it's going to be a case where you're doing a, doing a full point based um, approach inst instead. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm doing. Well, uh, there are things that are a couple of things you roll, for example, your health and your ether and remember right now there are a couple of things that you you roll for them mm -hmm. so they are not point based that you don't assign them but yeah the skills are all you assign the, the points some skills have a uh, like a core so for example perception everybody has a basic a, a baseline i think it was 10 points in perception there are a couple of skills like that that you have that yeah. baseline and then you just add a, the, whatever amount of points you want yeah if if that if that's the case, then providing some providing some sample spreads would be a good way to minimize the issue of choice paralysis because you've got a lot of skills. Yeah, and and there will be a <laughs> well. I, that's another thing I'm streamlining a little bit. I I put a, lot, a couple of skills, mash them up together. I can't remember right now which ones, but there were a couple of them that I said, okay, these two could be one skill. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is true. I I also had to since I'm rolling in the attributes into the skill system. I did have to add a couple of of, of new skills to account for that. So I, I it's just I cannot. I don't have my notes right now mm -hmm. in front of me, so I can't remember. Uh, but but yes, uh, the, the I mean a few sample builds or whatever you want to call them. It's a it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. I know, I know that to some that might run counter to the freeform design, but it's it's more of giving people a way to eat to ease them in. Since you yeah. look at yeah, you look a, at something like idea. say um, Shadowrun, you know where for the longest mm -hmm. time character creation was here's here's a few hundred points of karma, go at it. Or, or GURPS, yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> God, GURPS. I don't hate GURPS, but I I think a lot of people who are um tr who are trying to sell me on it, um, are only telling half of the story. Because I keep hearing, "Oh, you can do anything with GURPS," which is true, 
Yeah, it is true, but it also requires a lot of time. Yeah, it's I I it it's it's as true as saying that Gary Coleman is taller than Webster. You're technically true, but it's completely misleading. <laughs> uh, it's like and it and analysis paralysis when you have a whole lot of um, customization is going to be a thing that is that's going to get brought up. Like no matter yeah. no matter what, it's get it's going to happen. So so instead of trying to avoid the problem, it's best to try and reduce it. And yeah, that's that's exactly why I I made the heart system the way I did, and also why how it is introduced into the game. I mean the you when you start the game, you you are given a choice of two hearts out of four, so you're not really going to have a uh, decision paralysis, and it it releases you into into the huge variety of, of skills and abilities you have. So yeah, yeah. Now, when it comes to item encumbrances, that still going to be ch that's still going to be present the way that it is. Yeah, I don't think I'm. I think I think I had a couple of notes regarding that, so I I was tweaking something. But yes, essentially, it's it's I'm going to to leave it the way it is because it's I think it's simple and slot based encumbrance is mm -hmm. easy to understand, easy to handle. It does need a, a little bit of further clar clarification, a couple of things, but but yes, it's basically re remaining the same. Yeah, and the big reason I ask these kind of things because if you're if you're getting away from these six ability scores, that's going to have a ripple effect towards pretty much the entirety of um the of the mechanics definitely yeah yeah yes so that's actually the the biggest um time consuming thing i have to be checking okay this made reference to this attribute which doesn't exist anymore so how does it work now <laughs> mm -hmm. and because and because of that it's important to to nail it to nail that kind of thing down here that's so. Yeah. I'm, I wouldn't. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna take a while for this revise for this revised edition to come to come to fruition. Oh. Yeah. Well, my plan is to have it ready for early next year, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I already have the new cover commission. Well, and it's finished actually. And uh, I started with the layout, with the basic design of everything. So, um, yeah, the the, the core stuff is already in place. So it's just a matter of continue my my development pass and and add all the changes I I have on my list. Um, I think one of the other things I was curious about is if you plan on if you if you plan on putting any bit of guidance or the like for people who want to start at a higher tier than just the starting level. Oh well, that's actually something I didn't. I didn't think of, but yeah, it's not, it's not a bad idea. Um, well, tying into that, another criticism, which I think uh, that I got, which I think is very valid, is that the leveling up was generally too too slow and too grindy. So I'm, I'm tweaking the, I'm tweaking that, and the I think it will be faster to <laughs> to reach higher ranks right now because yeah, it's 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 a lot of farming, which is. It's one of the core things in the game. I mean, you're going to have to, to if you want to, to grow your character, you're going to have to farm because everything works via, via drops. So if you're going after a specific character build, you're going to have to, to, to grind. Even though the auction house mitigates that a little bit, but yes, the I, I agree with with the, the leveling. The curve was a little bit too steep, so I'm I'm fixing that. But yeah, it's not a bad idea to implement some kind of uh, way, some way of of starting at a higher rank. So yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Yeah, and I, I know that's I know that uh, this is this is something that's pretty common within within MMOs. But it's a ca it's a case of when in Rome, in Rome you do you do as the Romans do. Uh, yeah. When it, now, when it comes to when it, com when it comes to the the full ver 
the um, version that you're doing. I know that there's a whole chapter on the setting. Do you plan on expanding that lore-wise? No, no, not really, because that kind of stuff, that feels to me more second edition <laughs> material. And I don't want to completely change every aspect of the game, because, yeah, that will be a, a second edition. And like I said, it's a little bit too early. I just want to fix the little details that I think can be fixed and that deserve to be fixed and and just uh, make the game better, just in a word better, without having to go into a full-blown second edition. Yeah, I can, cer I can certainly get that. Well, with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness that happens around here. And anytime you thank, see fit, thank you. Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around thank here, you. drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!